everybody. Hello, everybody. We are live on the Avi expedition. Uh, we are. I don't know if these people are connected already. It doesn't matter. Really? But we are. We are just waiting in case you are you are watching. We are waiting one two more minutes before we start, um, so that uh, everybody can be there. that's people connected right mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so maybe we can wait yeah i would wait minutes. i mean we're almost it's not even four so mm. i would wait one or two more minutes and then start Your dad is here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it's already dark outside. Yep. Like almost the whole day. Yeah. I guess we can start. Yeah. Yeah. It's already on time, but it's okay. We can start. Okay. So welcome everybody at this Instagram live at the coffee break session. Um, we are Johan and Fieke, and we are working at the Avipef station in the Allesund in Svalbard. And uh, in the next 20 to 30 minutes, minutes we will um, answer some of the questions we've received already. And you will also in the last 5 to 10 minutes have the opportunity to ask questions still. And yeah, with this we will give you a little insight in the work and life, how it is up here. Um, just so you know, like we are working at AviPath, which is a combination of the German Research Institute AVI with the French Polar Institute um, IPEF. So the station here is called AviPath, and that's also the reason why we do it in English, so that everybody can follow it, since it's an international community over here. Um, so we will start and yeah start answering the questions we've received from you and as i said in the last five to ten minutes you will have the, op the possibility to ask questions yourself so uh yeah first we'll talk a bit about ourselves and how we drink our coffee and tea yeah <laughs> <laughs> you want to start or i or my answer is maybe a bit boring but i mostly drink water do you during my work time, <laughs> it happened to me to drink tea, but not coffee. And uh, oh. so today I have a really corporate mug. It's a Namuria station in Antarctica, filled with water. Yeah. In uh, I have a cup. It says uh, soup van de dag. It means soup of the day in Dutch. It, I drink at the moment tea. I hate drinking tea from small cups. So that's why I use a soup cup to drink enough tea at least. Um, yeah. For us. I drink now quite some coffee to stay a bit awake during the dark season. It does help and it's a bit needed. Um, yeah. Um, the first question we had is uh, where do we know each other from? So we met just before the beginning of our mission up here during the training. So we have two or three months of training before coming here. So it happened in Germany and in France. So we met there. And uh, we spent a few weeks together to do several training. And then uh, we spent uh, every day uh, together here in uh, Nialisun. Yeah, yeah, that's how we know each other and how we worked. Um, one more thing about the coffee. I just forgot to, to, to talk about it. But a funny thing with the coffee drinking here in Nialisun, like, is that we every friday before the weekend starts so every friday at three o'clock there is often a coffee organized by one of the research institutes in town because we are not the only institutes or not the only institute here in Jalesund. there are many other institutes or organizations working here and um, sometimes some of those institutes organizes a three o'clock coffee where everybody joins drinks a coffee or a tea or something else um, maybe there are sometimes there are waffles and often there is a cannon that is being shot at three o'clock to start the weekend. So that's quite nice. Yeah. Okay. So more about us, uh, as Johan said. About our work. Yeah, about our work. Yeah. Um, we got a question 
yeah, who are you and what do you do? We will combine a few questions in the next uh, answer because they are similar and easier to answer in once. I can start to answer that. So yeah. about my job, so I'm Joran, I'm the logistic engineer. So here uh, there is three persons working for Avipef, so Fiku and I and Greg. Greg is a station leader and Fiku is the observatory engineers and I'm the logistics engineer. So I take care of all of the logistic issues. So when scientists need to send some equipment up here to do science or if we need uh, uh, field equipment or technical equipment, I take care of the freight to receive and to send it back. And uh, I make sure every equipment is running. We have several boats, um, snowmobile, and we have one remote station out of um, town. So I have to make sure everything is running uh, quite well. And uh, when scientists need support on the field, I go with them mostly on boats, uh, like when they need to harvest, for example, water, uh, I would drive the boats uh, with them on the specific points to uh, give them supports. Um, what was the name? So uh, did you come how did you come to Avipev? So I discovered this job uh, because um, my ex roommate, I live in Paris, did this job a um, few years ago. I don't know if he's connected, maybe if he's here. Hi, Christophe. And um, so he explained me and this job was for me kind of a dream job. So I applied and I was really uh, motivated to got it. And um, what else? Do you like what I like the most? Oh, you, you want to answer yeah, later but, about this one? Yeah, I can answer also a bit yeah. from my side. Sorry, my screen is sometimes getting mm. a bit off. Um, so for my side, it's like I'm Fika. I'm working in observatory of us of Avipef. So we have this uh, mostly atmospheric observatory with a lot of instruments from different universities and institutions um, that are measuring here. Mm. And I'm making sure that all those instruments are running, doing some, yeah, some maintenance at calibrations and some operational work on the instruments as well. And um, I came up here because I wrote my master thesis at AVI in the atmospheric physics group in Potsdam. And last year, from March to June, I had the opportunity to come here. Originally planned, it was planned to be here just for one month. But then COVID came and I could stay three months longer. So I got to know the station pretty well, got to know the processes and yeah, the way of living here already. And that's how I got up now in the position I have now. Um, and we have been here, I don't know if you said it already, but since, since, April. since April and we will stay until around June next year and thus over winter here as well. And we got a question what we like about the work and what is so special about it. Um, I can answer from my side that it's that no day is the same. It's very versatile. Um, so we have, yeah, tasks in like in my case, uh, in more engineering parts, repairing, taking care of the instruments, which is nice because you can often also go out. You can go on the rooftop. You can sometimes go in the field to do checkups or to do reparations. So it's not just a computer-based job. That's really a big advantage, and it's just very nice to work in this environment over here it's beautiful uh, the, the community here is nice and um, as i said it's a very versatile job so we are also doing some of the science ourselves by launching weather balloons or doing minor scientific experiments and uh, are responsible for the safety of the people going out in the field here so it's it's diverse with many different tasks yeah uh, what I want to say on my side about this is first the uh, community spirit. I already experienced this uh, kind of environment, but not so far. Uh, and I really like to uh, be every time with people. Uh, we are a real community. We help each other. So I really appreciate this. And of course, working with scientists, uh, I have a, a physics background. So I'm really interested about uh, the science uh, happening here. And um, and every day is different, so there is no uh, routine, and it's uh, really uh, appreciable to do this and 
yeah and the environment of course we live in a beautiful area and the nature is amazing and uh, yeah it's a lot of thing who makes this place really uh, special mm. yeah i agree just one comment um so we got a few questions already in between i'm writing those down so i won't forget them and in the end there will be more options to actually ask the, <coughs> the questions as well um, but just so you know that i actually write them down and i mm. take them into account I can go through the next question. So someone asked who lives and how many people live at Avipev and the surrounding area. So as we said, we are three permanent person plus now there is six scientists working uh, with Avipev and uh, there is other uh, stations. There is a Norwegian station, there is Italian station um, and uh, Kings Bay is a uh, Norwegian company taking care of the facilities here. So there is different organization and in total we are around now 100 uh, person. And uh, so during summer, uh, so during the high activities, we can reach 120 person. And during low season, around Christmas, we should be around 30 person. So it really depends on the scientist activities and uh, so it can the difference can be by four. Yeah. And um, we got a question about uh, a normal day. Yeah, how does a normal day look like for you at Avipev? So as we said, there is no normal day. Uh, on my side I can for example spend one day on the field with scientists to give them help to drive boat or to collect sample, for example. Or I can just be focused on the logistics when we have to send back uh, equipment uh, on container on maintenance if breakdown happen and if it needs to be fixed really fast. So that's one of the uh, positive point for this job is there is no uh, normal day. And um, about the hour, let's say um, about breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, it's a really specific time, so uh, breakfast happens be between 7.30 and 8.30 mm. and there is lunch between 12 and 1 p.m. Then dinner is quite early, it starts at uh, 4.30 uh, to 5.30, so it's quite early. So then after you can uh, continue working or you can go for personal activity and what is nice here is there is a gym, so a lot of people participate in the gym after work. So we practice um, indoor hooky, uh, which is called bandy, or we do circuit training. Um, so it's more specifically during the winter season, but during summer, there is so much outdoor activities to do. We can go kayaking, uh, skiing, or hiking, and alpinism. So it's, um, especially during summer, there is 24 hours sun. So it's like unlimited uh, quantity of activities uh, you can do here, and it's really, uh, appreciable yeah um we got sorry i was just checking something what is there is no new question no but i don't get this one oh it's okay um so we got a few more questions about everyday life and one of them is how are you supplied and what is a classic dinner um we are mainly supplied by boats, so there is a boat coming every, yeah, say one and a half month, uh, supplying us with food, fresh vegetables, yeah, and other stuff as well. And classic dinner, it's difficult to say. There is a buffet, so it's often there, you always have a bit of choice. Um, Monday and Thursday is usually reserved for fish. Uh, we both eat vegetarian, but that's always very good as well um yeah norwegian food is a lot of is with potatoes. a lot of potatoes uh when i was here last year uh it was there was more potato involved this time it's quite diverse um it's difficult to say what is a classic dinner but it's good food and we definitely cannot complain about that when i talk for myself no it's okay for me as well yeah and then we got the question if there are any bars cafes or restaurants Mm, there is there are bar options but everything is run by the community so there is no private bar or restaurant or cafe or something but we have every saturday night we have bar night and uh, have a bar area or we have a bar but it's run by the community mm. 
and that's very nice for the rest there are no cafes or restaurants over here but it's not really needed because everybody knows each other and there's often at some place or at some station there's something going on so people will see each other anyway um, we don't really need here other we don't really need more bars or cafes to to gather up because well, we are a very small community and see each other the whole time and then we got a question how we stay in touch with friends and family um, from my side I can say that it's yeah via, via Skype and Telegram and other messengers um, we don't have Wi-Fi here because of scientific reasons it would interfere uh, with some antenna um, receivers yeah, Wi-Fi 4G uh, 3G and Bluetooth yeah. uh, device are forbidden here yeah so it's only with cable yeah we have yeah everything is Ethernet is cable um, but that works fairly well, so we always can Skype fairly well with people. We can call, but that's more expensive. At least we don't, yeah, for other people. Um, so we, yeah, it's mostly via Skype and things like that. That goes fine. Yeah, and um, yeah, we have some more questions that we got from the community. They are not really in one yeah. category. Yeah, we just jump and answer to this question. Uh, can the base be visit visited by large public because it's kind of linked with the mm. previous? So. Uh, family or friend can visit us because there is a uh, plane every week like during winter season there is two planes per week and during summer season there is four so it's possible to uh, friend and family to visit but uh, the seat on the plane uh, the priority is for science so it has to be book in advance and there is just a few quantity of seats uh, dedicated to uh, friend and family but if you don't know someone in the station. If you just want to visit Nyalisun, it's not possible to come up here by plane. Uh, it's only by boat, and uh, generally they don't stay uh, for a long period. It's just one or two days. So it's really dedicated to science and uh, uh, close family and friends from people uh, working here as a permanent uh, with a permanent position. Mm. The next question is uh, what is the temperature at the moment i guess today it's around minus mm. eight minus yeah. nine mm. uh, we had a kind of a windy week uh, today is quite uh, calm but the temperature should decrease this weekend and we should raise i guess uh, minus 18 degrees mm. Mm. so um, winter is definitely here and fun fact the weather today was good enough to have a rocket launch <laughs> because they're at the moment they're uh, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency is here together with a space agency from Norway and they uh, wanted to launch a rocket, a scientific rocket, and all conditions were fine. So they launched a rocket, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to mention that. Um, about yeah. our background. Yeah. We okay. answered already a bit about how we came here, but we can go in a bit more detail about what we studied in order to come up here. Yeah, and what we did before. Yeah. We can start. So, yeah. uh, my background is physics, so I'm mostly studying engineering, so in physics and mechanics, and I did a few jobs before, so I work in the renewable energy uh, industry for four years, and I did other jobs. I was a uh, lifeguard and dive guide and first aid instructor. Uh, but I'm 29 years old, so that's uh, much I don't have. I d didn't do so much job before, but mainly uh, uh, renewable energy industry. Yeah, um, I have a bit of a diverse yeah, study thing as well. So I did my bachelor's in biotechnology, um, a lot of molecular biology and process engineering, combination of those two. And then in my master's, I studied, it's called Technische Umweltschutz and the TU Berlin, um, specialized so environmental science and technology, specialized in atmospheric chemistry, ended up doing atmospheric physics at AVI, uh, and now I'm here. So yeah, that's sort of my yeah. <laughs> what I did. Uh, we already answer what do you like most from work in yeah. life nearly soon. We answer if we live during the polar night. So yes, it's a 15 months. Uh, uh, mission so we stay the entire uh, winter and we do not plan to move for holiday so yeah. it's uh, kind of 15 months straight uh, without break um, yeah. 
we got another question. Do we have fluent water in Svalbard? And before there was also the question how we get our drinking water to make our coffee or tea. Um, so yes, we have fluent water in Svalbard. Um, here specifically in the Alazund, we have a lake a bit out of town. Uh, it's a freshwater lake uh, supplied by glacier water and rainwater. And um, this lake is monitored carefully for the quality and with some filters uh, before we use that water from that lake uh, for drinking water here in the Alazund. So that's how we're supplied here. Um, we got another question, namely, now what was your career path to become an Arctic researcher? Totally we answered. sort of answered yep. it already. And now we have a question considering um, what is going on at the moment in Glasgow about the COP26. And the question was, what are you expecting from the COP26 in Glasgow? So I can answer to this one. So what personally I expect is, of course, first from the governments to improve the strategy about reducing the carbon emission. So now with the current strategy, we should aim 2.7 degrees uh, for the end of the century. And the Paris Agreement, uh, with the Paris Agreement, we should stay below two degrees. So we do not respect now this agreement. So government has to improve, of course. But uh, in my opinion, um, it's the COP26 should be more than a, a carbon topic. Uh, of course, we are facing a climate crisis, but as well a biodiversity crisis. So we should consider both uh, together. Uh, for example, if we in few uh, decades turn the fishing industry to carbon neutral with, I don't know, electrical, but with electricity produced with, let's say, solar power plant or nuclear, whatever. But if we keep fishing a lot of fish, OK, it's going to be carbon neutral, but the um, fish uh, um, population will decrease. So we, in my opinion, with this COP, uh, face those two problematics, the climate crisis and uh, uh, six mass uh, extinction together. And the last thing um, I should expect from this COP26 is from the developed country. They should help more the developing country. Um, it has been agreed during the COP15 in Copenhagen and the COP21 in Paris. Uh, developed countries should raise uh, every year 100 billion dollars to help a uh, developing country uh, during five years starting in 2020, 2020 sorry. and last year they raised 80 billion so there is 20 billion missing so they have to reach this uh, 100 billion per year as fast as possible so it's uh, the other uh, thing I'm expecting for this uh, COP. Mm. Yeah, considering other another topic considering climate change, we got the question uh, if we see the Arctic changing. I will answer to that, but also say already that we're almost at the end of our questions. So if you have more questions, feel free to ask them now via this Instagram live. Um, so to the question, do you see the Arctic changing? Um, it is changing. It's just that we are here just for 15 months. So it's difficult to see the Arctic changing with our own eyes. Um, however, there have been researchers here coming already to Neolazund for 30 years and they definitely see changes. They see the glaciers melting, they see, depending on what they study as well, they have more details about their field of study. Um, they see the ecosystem changing uh, with our weather balloons that we start already every day since more than 30 years. We see the temperature increasing, so the science is definitely showing a lot of change. It is warming up very fast, the Arctic, faster than the rest of the Earth. And um, yeah, visually you, you can see it by the glaciers mostly. And the fact that in the winter there's no sea ice anymore. There used to be, the, fjord, the, the, fjord, the fjord used to freeze in the winter times and this usually now doesn't, does not happen anymore. Um, we got another question from the community before. Um, so feel free now to take to ask more questions. We got the question if we take medication to uh, yeah to cope. I think with the things we should yeah the, how do you say to curve the desires. But it's about the polar night. Yeah, I think it was related to the polar nights. If we take medic medication. 
from um, yeah. I take once a month vitamins and I do uh, luminotherapy. So we have specific light uh, producing the sunlight with uh, D vitamin. So I try to do it every day when I'm doing uh, office work. Mm. But that's pretty much, uh, I guess now we are lucky to have fresh food. So we um, are not missing vitamins, I guess. Uh, uh, I think the important thing is my opinion is to have um, a nice psychological health and for me it means to have social interaction and to not stay alone in your place after work. You should wish, I try in, on my side to spend time with people in the gym, in the bar and to have social interac interaction to not be alone and to have and to live winter with people mm. with the entire mm. community. Yeah, yeah, I, it's the same for me. So. I do take vitamin pills now every day, um, mostly for the vitamin D. And the what I also take now is that the Norwegians here, they have this tran, it's called. It's uh, oil, I think originally it's fish oil. I take the one with lemon taste because I don't really like fish taste <laughs> early in the morning. Um, but yeah, that one has extra vitamin A, D and E. Uh, so I take this and I also have this daylight lamp to look into every day a bit. Um, for us, the polar winter just started, so it's so far it's all okay. Let's see how it will be in two months. But it helps a lot that we have dinner times and breakfast and lunch every day on the same time. It, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if it is summer or winter. Um, that's really important to keep to keep up the rhythm and to not, yeah, um, lose your rhythm completely. So that really helps a lot. Uh, before we got one more uh, question about the freshwater lake that we have here for the running water, uh, if it doesn't freeze in the winter times, um, do you know how they, so how they do that? So the thing is, uh, this lake is filled uh, from the soil, from the perm I mean the permafrost, not because it's not frozen if the water coming up here. So it's uh, coming from uh, the soil. So no, I was wondering the same thing when I. Uh, understood the uh, water was coming from a lake but no and uh, this lake is quite deep so can it happen uh, maybe but uh, as I know uh, we never had a water issue before oh. what is this question uh, somebody has his birthday it's going to turn yeah we we can do that so there's somebody mm, <laughs> because there wasn't were not other many other questions so far we can say let's go brennan and good luck from the scientific community in the arctic <laughs> okay um curious do you celebrate midwinter like you do in antarctica uh yes and no generally the biggest parties here in town are related to the sun so here the biggest party each year is midsummer it's the summer party um so that's celebrated the return of the sun is bigly celebrated is largely celebrated as well um we had a fall party so that one <laughs> yeah and in winter times it's more that there's sort of the whole month of December will be dedicated to Christmas activities. It's a big thing in town. Um, so that's not specifically a midwinter thing, but it's more combined with Christmas over here. Um, yeah. But midsummer party is the biggest thing here in town. Okay. Um, there is a last chance for a question. Ha. Huh. Oh, you celebrate Sinterklaas. That's Sinterklaas. a question for me because uh, I'm from the, the Netherlands. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe I can organize something. Okay. If there are no further questions, then yeah, it's perfect. It's yeah, just 20 minutes. exactly 30 minutes. Yeah. Or sort of. Yep. So thanks you a lot also oh, for, for watching. Number, yeah. um, yes. And... Uh, yeah, if you have other questions, feel free to maybe write at Avi Expedition. Um, we have, have two more things to say. Uh, so this coffee break concept takes place every thurs Thursday of the month and starts at 4 p.m. over here. Um, the next one will be at the 2nd of December, also at 4 p.m. 
and the participants will be announced on Instagram soon. Um, so thank you. And uh, also we both have Instagram as well. So if you want to, yeah, if you're interested in following um, more pictures about what's going on here, it's at Johan Dulang and at Arctic Reporter um, for more pictures. For example, from today, Locket Ranch yeah. that will soon be there. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, maybe see you another time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now is you have to save.